This lesson is uh, still on exponential functions, but this is what an exponential function looks like and what its parts are. So this is an exponential function. It is unique because it has an x or a variable in its power. So it has to have an x in its power. So let's review just real quick. You've got linear, which is y equals mx plus b. And now you've got exponential, which is y equals a b to the x. Now in linear, m is a number and b is a number. Well, in exponential, a is going to be a number and b is going to be a number. So the only places you're going to have letters are here for your y and here for your x. Just like with linear, when I have my y-intercept, that is my starting point. Well, in exponential, your starting value is your a, the number in the front, the number that is not being raised to the power. In linear, m is my slope. That is how fast or how slow uh, it's increasing or decreasing. For exponential, b, which is going to be the number that is raised to the power, is your rate. If it is increasing, it will be bigger than 1. And if it's decreasing, it will be smaller than 1. And we'll see what some of these look like. So for each situation, write a function rule and a now next rule. We're just going to focus on the function rule. Since you made $3,000 last summer mowing lawns in your neighborhood, and you're going to put it in a bank, and you're going to make 6% interest on it. This is not a linear function. So we discussed yesterday, 6% interest grows every time because each time you have more money that you're making 6% interest on. So again, this is my general form. So this is going to be y equals 3,000 is my starting amount, so that is my a. This is the only part that's a little tricky. I'm gaining 6%, and the 6% as a decimal is 0 0.06. But I'm not just earning 6%. I mean, I still have 100% of what the money that I put in there. So I still have the $3,000, and I have 6%. So I have to take 1, because that's my $3,000. I have all of my $3,000 and I'm adding to it 6%, so I have 1.06 to the x. And x here is time, how long you're going to leave it in there. Now, there's a couple different ways you can think about this. I have 100% of my money. I'm gaining 6% of my money. I have 106%, and when you take the percent sign on, off, you scoot your decimal twice. That can get you that number right there. Or you can just know that you move your decimal twice and either add it or subtract it from one. You bought a car for $20,000. It depreciates 9% each year. So 20000 is my A. Now it depreciates. That means it's going down. So I take my 100% and I subtract 9% from it, and that gives me 91%. When I take my percent sign off, I have to scoop my decimal twice. So 0.91 to the x, because it keeps depreciating every year. So the value is going to change depending on how long I have the car. If I only have it for a year, it will only depreciate a little bit, but if I have it for 10 years, it will have depreciated a lot. You bought a rare baseball card for $7,500. It appreciates at 4% each year. Appreciates. So Y equals $7,500. 
I have 100% of my baseball card. It appreciates, so I add 4%. That gives me 104%. Both of these are percents. When you take the percent sign off, you scoot your decimal twice. So 1.04 to the X. You invested $5,500 in the stock market. You lost 12% each year. So my starting value is $5,500. I started with 100% of my money. I lost 12%. That means I'm sitting at 88%. When you take that percent sign off, you scoot your decimal twice. Rural Hall has 57,000 citizens. The population is increasing exponentially by 3% each year. So we have 57,000 citizens. I have them 100%. I'm increasing 3%. So that's 103%. Takes my percent sign off, scoop my decimal two places. To the X. And what does X stand for? It stands for time. We're going to deal more with that later. Miss Williams bought a house for $50,000 and it doubles in value each year. Now this is different because it doesn't have a percent, but it's still doubling each year. So the first year it doubles, so it makes $50,000, but then it's worth $100,000. So the next year when it doubles, you take $100,000 and double it, so it just gained $100,000. So it's not increasing at the same amount every time. So I'm starting with $50,000, and it doubles. So instead of 100%, it doubles and has another 100%. So that's 200%. Scoot your decimal twice gives me a 2. Or, yeah, you could just look at the fact that it doubles and know that a 2 goes there. Something triples and a 3 is going to go there. The initial population of 50,000 fell each year by half. So 50,000 people. I start with 100%. I lose half. That's 50%. So I'm at 50%. Take this off. Scoot your decimal twice. You could also write this. You see the word half. So you can have a half there. Just like in the problem before you saw the word double, you could put a 2 in there. Describe the starting value and the increasing or decreasing nature of the following ex exponential functions. So this is the sentence we're going to use for all of them. Starting value of blank and is increasing or decreasing at a rate of blank. Okay. So for A, my starting value is 200. I am, how can you tell if you're increasing or decreasing? Well, if it's above 100%, it's increasing. If it's below 100%, it's decreasing. We're at 93%. So we are decreasing. How much below 100% are we? We're 7% below 100. So we are decreasing at a rate of 7%. So our starting value was 200. We are decreasing at a rate of 7%. For B, we are starting at 750. We are increasing because we're above 100% at a rate of, well, how much above 100% are we? We're 15% above 100. For C, my starting value is 6,000. I'm increasing because I'm above 100. How much above 100 am I? I'm 4% above 100. So I'm increasing by 4%. This one starts at 30. I'm decreasing because I'm below 100. How much below 100 am I? That's 15% below. 
so I'm decreasing at 15%. For E, my starting value is 25. I'm definitely increasing because that's above 1. And then you're, you can just say that you're tripling, which is definitely increasing. For F, I'm starting at 8. I'm decreasing because I'm below 100. And then how much is 71 below 100? 10, 20 would get us to 80. So 9 more, so 29%. And if you're not sure, just do 100 minus 71. So for G, I'm starting at 100. I'm increasing because I'm bigger than 1. And how much above 1 is that? That is 50% above 100% because that would be 150%. So 50% above 100. This one starts at 50. It is definitely decreasing. That is way below 100%. So you can do 100 minus 11, um, and that gives you 89%. Okay, so here's what it can look like multiple choice. The change of a quantity after x years can be modeled by that function, which describes how the quantity changes each year. A, it is growing. Are we growing? No, because we're less than 1. So it is not growing. It is not growing. It is decreasing. All right, is it decreasing at or by 8 each year? No. How far is 96% below 100%? That's 4%. So it's decreasing by 4% every year. The function P of T equals 52 times 1.025 models the population growth of a town and thousands of people T years after 2010. So 2010 is when my data starts. Which best describes the population growth? Well, it's in thousands of people. So when it says 52, it doesn't mean there are 52 people. It means there are 52,000 people. So when we started, we're starting in 2010. So in 2010, I have 52,000 people. Yes, I like that. In 2011, no. In 2010, there were 52,000 people. And in 2011, there were 52,000 people. No. Okay, is our population growing or decreasing? Well, that's above a 1, so we are growing. So A says it's growing, and C says it's growing. Okay, so it comes down to how much it's growing. Well, take your decimal, scoot your decimal twice. So that's 102.5%. So how much above 100% is that? That's 2.5% percent above 100. So we are not growing at that rate. We are growing at 2.5 percent. So when it asks you how much it's growing, you always want to know how much above 100 percent it is. What does the value of a 2 represent in the following function, where x is time and years? Okay, so let's look at this. Well, the 60 is where we start, and the 2 means we are doubling. The function starts at 2. No. The function increases by 2 each year. No, that would actually be linear. The function increases by 2% each year. That's tempting, but 2% would be that. So that would look like this. And that's not what we have. The function doubles each year. Yes. Okay, on your own, for each situation, write a function, and we're not going to do the now next. Write a function rule. Population of bacteria is decaying by 25% each hour. Population of 10. So y equals my starting value is 10. I'm decaying by 25%, so 100% minus 25% gives me 75%. Take the percent off, scoot the decimal twice. 
So 0.75 to the x. And x represents hours. Suppose your parents deposited $1,500 into account earning, that means going up, 3.5% interest. So y equals 1,500. Okay, and I have 100%. I'm adding to it 3.5%. So that's 103.5%. Scoot your decimal twice, take the percent off. So 1.035 to the X. You started with five boogers and they are tripling by the hour. I start with five, they are tripling every hour. For each function rule, write the starting value and the rate of change. So my starting value is a thousand, my rate of change is 10% because I'm 10% above 100. My starting value is 3,000, my rate of change is 25% decreasing. This one was increasing. For this one, my starting value is 100, and I'm increasing, I'm tripling. I'm not going to put increasing by 3, because if I increase by 3 every time, that makes it sound like it's linear. It's not. So when you see the 3, tell me that it's tripling. Or if you see a 2, that means they are doubling.